Hi everyone, uh, this is uh, Francesca Conti from AUR and I would like to share with you some tips about managing stress for your assignment and exams. So what are the main symptoms of you know, this particular type of stress and what can we do about it? So first of all, uh, worrying about failing and worrying about not passing at a particular exam or imagining the worst case scenario or the, all the terrible things that can happen to you. This is quite common. And because, you know, we always worried, uh, we always worry about our performances and what will happen, you know, if we don't do especially well. Uh, now we might worry even if we have a very good record in the past about taking exam in that subject area. And we might worry, um, because it's a new subject for us, uh, for us, or it's the first time we we take a class in that subject, or we don't know the professor, or we have some problems understanding some of the lectures, or we didn't follow uh, some of the lecture. There could be many different reasons. And now, despite you know uh, the, the the causes of our stress, what happened is that we tend to imagine always the worst case scenario if we're feeling quite low and if we're feeling you know our mood is not really great and we are, we are a little bit down and especially in this moment during the coronavirus we are bombarded with a lot of tragic information from the outside world so it would be strange you know that we were you know we're feeling very great about ourselves in our life so of course this is a very tough semester and uh, chances are you're not feeling so confident about yourself but if you are where you are right now so if you're taking classes at university whether you are in your first second or final year uh, chances are that you have a very good track record you know to rely on you've been taking classes before uh, you have overcome challenges before you had some difficult moments in the past during your school days and you can think about those and try, you know, to, to keep in mind that, in fact, this is not the first time you are actually facing these difficulties. And that, uh, you know, all exams are based on, you know, the syllabus and on some learning objectives that you can go back and check. And you can ask your professor uh, to help you, you know, also in, you know, uh, identifying the key points that you know you need to revise for any exam or the goal of the assignment and uh, that you're trying to prepare so this semester you know the, there are new policies in place there is flexibility uh, on many deadlines so you can really get the need you know the, the help you need you know so uh, try to look at you know the different angles <laughs> uh, um, of this uh, experience and please don't use you know uh, catastrophic images when visualizing your performances uh, chances are it's not going to be so hard or so difficult like you are making it to be and if you're spending a lot of time you know um, listening to people uh, that are you know imagining you know uh, you know what all the horrible things that can happen if they don't pass the exam and if they fail if they lose their scholarship and so on please remind them as well that this is not happening you know the, the things about worrying is that we worry a lot uh, because you know it gives us the false impression that uh, if I can prepare myself for the worst case scenario then whatever happens I'll be ready so we tend to worry because by imagining the worst, we think, you know, we're actually preparing for it, but you are not preparing, you know, for it. You're just worrying about it. So don't waste this energy, you know, because worrying takes a lot of our energy. So if you, this most of the time, you know, the, the reason why uh, perhaps we are not so, uh, brilliant in some of the assignments is because we have spent much more, more time worrying about the assignment than actually preparing for it by readings, by taking notes, by listening, you know, again, if we need to, to the recordings, you know, and in this case, because all the lectures are on Zoom and so on. So uh, make a list of the things you can do, you know, to pass that exam. 
because you know your professor on the other hand and i know this because i've been teaching for years will take into consideration the particular circumstances in which you are you know we all are taking into consideration the special condition in which you know you are trying to complete your assignment and semester so please to keep that in mind and do what you can towards the goal of passing the exam. So make a list of the things you can do, you know, uh, you're worrying about the exam. Did you do, you know, the required readings yet? Did you open the textbook yet? So let's go back to the basic here and start on this. And then you can talk to your friends, you can ask for help, you can give help, but that comes second. First of all, you need to understand what you need to do. Uh, now, when comparing yourself to others, this is point two, uh, don't use unrealistic uh, uh, kind of comparison. It's not possible, you know, <laughs> that everyone, you know, is doing great and you are, you know, the only one struggling. Uh, most likely what is happening is some people are expressing their concern and anger and others are not. But you're all having perhaps, a, you know, a difficult time or you're all more or less in the middle, I don't know. But, you know, don't trust, you know, what people are saying as the reality, you know. Uh, the reality is sometimes very different from what people, uh, you know, make them to be, even if they are your friend. So stick to you, you know, think about you, protect yourself from the negativity that is around you, from the bad news that people keep, come you know uh, sharing perhaps and try to cre establish some boundaries protect your personal space you know and just do what you can and what it's in your power to do to pass this this exam this exam and assignment final point uh, is you know right now because we are living in this kind of lockdown <laughs> and a lot of things have changed in our life. We might find ourselves to be more sleepy, more tired, um, more kind of slow, feeling a little bit demotivated and also confused, feeling a sense of, uh, you know, disorientation or feeling not so good about ourselves more in general. And we might have some trouble sleeping. There is even a term for it, lockout, lockdown, lockdown dreams, and it's all perfectly normal. So this lockdown experience is is going to be a, an emotional roller coaster sometimes. The, we might experience different kind of moods in the same day, during the same afternoon. And sometimes time, you know, passes. Sometimes it seems that, you know, the day never ends. It's all normal. And if you notice the time in which you're feeling, you know, particularly down and try to you know, pay attention to what you were doing just before that. For example, numbing your feelings on social media, on the different application, whatever it is that you're using. And it's again, you know, we cannot avoid that. We're all using social media these days, but there are, you know, ways in which you can use social media in which you're actively engaging in some conversation, keeping in touch with friends and family and ways in which you're just there passively scrolling, you know, uh, and looking at images that you're not particularly interested, but you keep going back and back because there's not much else to do. Now, doing that and over and over will probably decrease your self-esteem <laughs> because you feel you know that your life is meaningless after two hours of doing that your life is not meaningless <laughs> uh, it's just that there are some bad habits that might make it seem like it is not now now of course a lot of the fun aspects of your life <laughs> uh, are now you know uh, Perhaps uh, this seems very far away. You can't go out much, you can't travel and all that. You can't see your friends face to face. But this is all going to come back. This is temporary. So right now, you, what you can do is to establish a kind of reward system for yourself using the kind of little piece of joy that, you know, you can find in watching your favorite series, uh, playing video games, uh, dancing and using FaceTime to exercise with your friends and so on. So try to establish a kind of routine in which every time you accomplish something important for your studying, then you can 
you know, reward yourself with something nice and positive. So by, by doing that, you will have something to look forward to every day and every week. And by the way, even if the day seems all the same, you know, we do still have weekdays and weekends. So we can plan ahead. You can plan ahead for the weekends to do something more fun with your friends and spending more time, you know, relaxing than studying. And it's up to us, you know, to make some days a little bit special. You know, in relative terms, of course, they're not going to be as special as, you know, as when you were free to go out and partying. But still, you can do some uh, social and fun activities uh, if you plan ahead and try to use this kind of um, moment as rewarding system, you know, so that you will do some work and you will have something going on on your social life as well even if everything is happening in the same room. It doesn't matter. This is what you can right now and you have to work with what there is. Okay, so this is it for now and I hope you know some of this was useful for you. Let me know if you have any particular question or suggestion or things that you would like me to uh, talk about and you know I'll, I'll prepare more videos for you. Bye and take care of yourself. Bye bye.